Okay. Well, hello, we are live. Welcome to another episode of So Get This. And we have the lovely Lauren Tom with us tonight. Hey, Lauren. Hello, how you doing? Have great, a, great, how, how are you? Well? <laughs> oh, wow, so exciting. So let me just move my screen over so I can get a good view of the chat window. Okay. So our guests will be able to oh okay we've already got someone commenting saying they're so excited for to see you ah that's awesome okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to open up the questions that i sent you which i should have had opened you know right in front of me and so not prepared okay here we go okay <laughs> that's okay <laughs> so professional aren't i um Oh, uh, we are, um, I have a regular viewer here by the name of Carrie who is saying hello to you. She's a Hi, wonderful human being. Raven, will you please? Okay, so your career, it's incredibly well-rounded. You've done TV, you've done film, you've done stage and, and writing as well. And when it comes to TV, you've done so many different genres. You've done, done drama, you've done comedy, some weird show called on a Supernatural. I don't know if you might, <laughs> One of my you might have heard of that. <laughs> and um, a big array of voice work, like King of the Hill, that's my personal favorite, because that's just like the ultimate, it's, it's fantastic. Do you have a favorite medium and a favorite genre to work with? Well, you know, I started in, in live theater, and that's always really great, because it's only for those people in the room at that moment. And it's kind of magical in that way, and then it's done. So that it just felt really alive. Um, my very first show was this Broadway musical called The Chorus Line, and um, it was uh, really such an experience because I was only 17 years old, and so it was what a th the thrill of my life, honestly. And um, I did that show for two years, and then I realized that while I was on stage talking, I started to do my grocery list in my head. So I thought, you know what, I think it's time to go. <laughs> and, uh, like, get some new challenges. So then I moved into... Um, you know, into more stage work, and then from there I went to film and, and TV. But if I had to pick a favorite, oh gosh, you know, I don't know if I could choose a favorite, but because there's some pros and cons to both. So mm -hmm. with film, you get a chance to really, uh, film and theater, you get a chance to really rehearse for a long time and, and go deep into your character. And that's very fulfilling, because then you feel like you can bring as much truth as possible to it. And then mm -hmm. of course film is there forever. Um, but TV is really fast. So especially sitcoms, if a joke doesn't work in the moment and they're shooting, uh, they're taping it live, um, they might just say cut and a writer will come over and whisper a different joke in your ear and say, okay, try this one instead. So you have oh, wow. to really fast and just be able to be very flexible and move. So it, it kind of requires different skills. And so um, I, like, I like the different mediums for, for different reasons. And then of course voiceover, you know, you can be anything. I could be a 98 year old woman or a five year old black boy. No problem. And uh, so there's no stereotyping there. So that's very freeing. And I can dress like a slob and just go to work in my sweatpants if I want. So that's also good. I was pregnant with both of my kids up to the time, practically, that my water broke. I was still working <laughs> in voiceover. So that's also a, a plus. That's and, a huge plus. Yeah. Flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It just, um, I feel very blessed with the voiceover world because everybody, uh, gosh, I've been in it for what, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And honestly, I've never met one jerk in that entire time. Whereas in my <laughs> own screen camera work, uh, what are you doing? not Jared and Jensen though. <laughs> you guys will be happy to know that those two guys are really great. You know, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I read that you did the play Doonesbury. Oh, do you remember? Do you remember that comic strip? I saw the play Doonesbury. What? But I'm, I'm wondering if you were there. I saw it in New York City I when I was about twelve or thirteen. So we're talking 1982, 1983. I you were in it than you, but yes, you saw me. I was Honey Juan because I was the only one in the cast. With they never oh, switched cast. So. Oh my gosh, we we were in the same room way back then. I can't believe How it. How cool is that? Wait, you saw that was like a shaggy little show that if it had stayed on Off-Broadway, we would have ran a long time. 
but they had all these high hopes of doing a broad, doing it on Broadway. And Broadway needs to be just a little bit more polished and glitzy. And we were just like this little ragamuffin show. Hi, Raven. <laughs> she keeps photobombing. It's so cute. Um, but uh, I can't I saw that. <laughs> So, um, do you remember Mark Lynn Baker? He was in that, and yeah, Kate Burton, I didn't know that. Daniel Stern. Like, it had an amazing cla uh, cast. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Well, that's so cool. Well, I didn't even realize I was in the company of greatness back then. Well, you were, So, you were on the East Coast, right? Back then, you were in New Jersey? Is that right? Yeah. I was living so, in Jersey City at the time, and a family friend had taken us to go see Dunesbury. He used to take us to see some, some really cool stuff. You know, we got to see Little Shop of Horrors when it was... Wow. Um, down on the Lower East Side and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, we, I got exposed to some really good theater. Yeah, and Gary Trudeau was so great. He was married to Jane Pauley at the time, and she had just had twins, I remember. And she asked me to tie the babies into her, in her, to her knapsack. And I was young then, so I was, I was literally shaking because I was like, oh my gosh, if I don't tie a good knot, what if they fall out and everything? Goes on? <laughs> <laughs> and now they're grown, they're in their 20s or I don't know. They might even be in their thirties. I'm not sure. Oh wow! But yeah, yeah, they were really nice. Wow, that's very cool. Cool ways. Oh, we're getting some love in the chat room over here. We're getting love you, Mama Tran. Mm -hmm. A lot of haze and love people saying they so there to see you. Will you get your face over? She's making you another "You Are Awesome" song. Oh well, you can't have too many of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, you did a one woman show called yeah. 25 Psychics. Yeah. I, I don't think the fandom knows much about that because I've never talked about it before, but that was, gosh, that was like in the mid nineties and, um, people were doing that back then. It was kind of like a hip thing to do back then, but nobody's doing it now really. It's like enough of one person. Can we bring someone else on? But, um, it was, um, this, this HBO comedy festival festival is what it was and they paid um, myself and a few other people a fee to write something because they wanted to hear from some ethnic voices which was really lucky for me and um, so I basically I wrote this story about um, how my grandmother came from China to the United States and she was a freaking hilarious character she was four foot ten so I got to be taller than her but she was an absolute little tank so when people ask me, where's Mama Tran come from, I sort of just tr channel my grandmother. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother had an accent. Obviously, Mama Tran doesn't. But um, that same toughness is where I got that from because, you know, I took my grandmother to the, to the premiere of the Joy Luck Club. I don't know okay. if you saw that movie, but it was, it was a, one of the first Asian um, uh, films that told many stories about the Asian experience, right? And so mm -hmm. there were these horrific stories in the movie about what happened in China and I took my grandmother and my mother to the premiere right and my grandmother spent the entire time talking to the screen going wow, what are you why is everybody crying you just baby fuck up and I was just like sinking <laughs> down into my chair and she brought these things called moys that they're like dried prunes and they have a really loud wrapper and she was unwrapping each one and then the and then, and then spitting the pits out into this plastic bag. And it just was like, it was so horrible. That's what my husband does. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Exactly <laughs> so that's what the one person show was about. And it was obviously humorous. And, and um, you know, it was, it was kind of a moving story too. Because she, um, the gist of it is that she, at that time when she was growing up in China, uh, girls were not allowed to go to school, only the boys. And that always bothered her. So she made it a mission of hers to um, build a school there. So she had a Chinese restaurant in Chicago for 55 years. And every week she put away, you know, $5, $10 here. And at the end of that 55 years, she had a school built in her tiny little village. And I went with her for the opening of it. And it was the first school ever to allow girls to attend. So oh. it, was, it was pretty moving. Very. But yeah. It was, you know. I just, it's really nice to have someone to be able to look up to in that way. And she was such a pioneer. And it, it's nice with the Supernatural family, too, that I feel like um, a lot of the stars have, you know, are really walking 
a life that that you you can really look up to and helping so many people and that's one of the reasons why I love being part of the fandom so much you know all the work that Misha does and you know Jared's campaign now and just trying to help people with depression it's just it's really something to to be able to have celebrities use their platform like that for for the good of people because you know why else are we here right I mean and, and, and that's another thing about this, the cast of Supernatural, too. It's so different than any other fandom that I've encountered because it's not only that the cast is using their status as a way to help other people, but it's genuine and authentic. I mean, the, you all care so deeply about the causes that you're championing, championing. You're not doing it for an image. You're not doing it for publicity. You're doing it because you genuinely want to help. And that, I think makes Supernatural stand out so much more than anything I've ever experienced. For so many reasons, too. I mean, I just think the bottom line is that everyone really feels like they want to belong somewhere. And that it does feel like a family in, in many ways. And, and so hopefully it's just been, for me, it's just been only a positive thing. <laughs> All I get is love from the fandom. And um, so I'm hoping that they'll invite me to some more conventions because the ones with um, creation, I'm done now for this year. I have the one more at Asylum 14 in London in May. But then yeah. after that, I don't know. But hopefully maybe next year. Out there, write to creation. <laughs> create a Twitter crap storm. We got to get Lauren back on the convention circuit, please. That's right. But be nice about it. Don't yell. Yes, be <laughs> Kill them with kindness that you attract... What is it? You attract flies with honey? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. We have some great questions coming in. Um, actually, someone has a comment that A Chorus Line was actually one of their favorite uh, plays ever. Aww. And, oh, someone is asking, you guys, I see your, your, your questions coming in, but it's coming in as passenger, which means you're not logged in. Um, so if you're going to do the... Trivia contest later, I can't let you play because I don't know who you are, so please log in. So um, right now someone's asking, what was it like to punch Mark Shepard? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the highlights of my career, punching Mark <laughs> Shepard. I mean, it was so much fun that I actually threw my shoulder out because I was putting so much into it. <laughs> No one had ever let me do that before, and so... You were method acting. That's right, and Lou, our stunt guy, taught me how to really do it, and we practiced it, and rehearsed it, and rehearsed it, and Mark was just a dream. He just was, he really sold it, and uh, I, I actually threw my shoulder out, and then we had to ice it, and that, you know, the stunt guy got a, a, a masseur to come in and work it out for me because I couldn't move it the next oh day. I mean, you know, I'm tiny, and so no one's ever asked me to do that before, so I was almost giddy with delight, and I'm hoping that someone will let me do it again sometime, maybe even on Super Well, I think we could get that rolling, too. Okay, so that's another campaign we got to get going. Let's go <laughs> to Jim Michaels. Lauren needs to punch Mark again. <laughs> Harder. Harder. Um, Oh, you're getting asked to talk about your time on Friends. Oh, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, Friends was one of those little gifts. Um, I was actually watching the show uh, one night, and I and I uh, really thought that David Truman was kind of cute. And I said, "Well, let me make a mental note in my head, like, and get that guy's name." And so I, you know, looked him up, and it was, you know, David. So I remembered that. And then the very next day, and this is a true story, I was walking on my treadmill eating a donut because that's what I do. It's like calories in, calories out, and. Um, my my manager called and said, hey, Lauren, I have a job for you. And I was like, oh, great, what? And he said, they want you to do a seven-episode arc on the show Friends. And I went, what? Wait, is that the one with David Schwimmer? And he goes, yeah. And I said, okay, let me think about that for one second. Yes, uh, <laughs> when do I start? And so um, that was so thrilling to me. And um, I have to say that even though I knew the arc of the storyline ahead of time, like they, they, they told, they talked me through it. Apparently one of the producers from um, the show 
uh, had seen the Joy Luck Club and really uh, thought of me to be uh, this other woman to kind of keep Rachel and Ross apart for as long as possible. They wanted to draw that season out with them not getting together. So okay. the joke was is that, you know, Rachel hated me, but I was the nicest person on the planet. So that was kind of the joke, right? And so unlike Supernatural, where I never knew anything ahead of time, I only knew what was going to happen in that very next episode when I had to say my lines. <laughs> Unlike that, Friends kind of told me the whole arc of the story and that after six episodes, um, we were going to break up. And then, you know, Rachel and Ross would be free to get back together, but then I might find someone else in, in episode seven. So I knew that going in. But still, when it happened, I felt like that I was being kicked out of my family. <laughs> because, you know, when you see each other every day for seven weeks like that, you just get so close. And and I was having such a great time and I felt like I was being shoved out the door to go to college or something. And I really didn't want to go. And it, the other thing that happened was just that, you know, I usually get lots of just, you know, warm feelings from from a live audience. It's just, you know, people are so generous in that way. But this was the first time and only time that I've actually been booed when I came out because the fans were so invested in Rachel and Ross getting together that they did not want my character there. So that was kind of something I had to wade through a little bit. But that just means that you did an excellent job with that character. That's well, exactly the reaction the, that 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 you wanted, wasn't it? Yeah, that's true. That's that's sweet of you to say. But I I had to weather through one more incident in that in that whole uh, chapter, and that is um, the National Enquirer put on the front page after my lap met my last episode. Friends actress fired because she was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? They, the, the, the cast and the, the crew were so nice to me. Like, they took me out to lunch for my birthday, and everyone got along really well. I, I don't think they thought, that's not why I was fired. This was like this. And so I called a lawyer and said, is this something I can fight? And, you know, he looked into it a little, and, they, and he came back and said, you know what, they're standing by their story. I don't know where they got the story. But, you know, just look at it this way. A picture is worth a thousand words, and, um, you know, you just got some free publicity. But that was really hard because I just wanted to say that's not true and that, you know, usually I feel like there's a kernel of truth, you know, in in a story in some in some of those rag magazines and then they build, they weave like something all around it. But I don't really know where that would have come from because other than the fact that that was the storyline of the show that Rachel thought I was bitch, you know. So anyway, but it was a great experience. And with all of my classical training and everything on, in theater with Shakespeare and this and that, People still really want to just know what was it like to kiss David Schwimmel. That's that's really all they wanted. <laughs> and I was like, or punch Mark Shepard. It was fine. Exactly. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't like not fine. He was a fine kisser, but it wasn't anything that was gonna <laughs> say was the epitome. And she of my wasn't fired for harassing David Schwimmer. Let's just get that clear too. That's right. That's right. So yeah, that was. Um. <laughs> um we have, I'm going to scroll back up for a second because I thought I saw somebody. Okay. Um, uh oh, someone's calling me. I'll just ignore it. You sure? Yeah. While you're looking for a question, I'll just show some of these little. Wait, can you see that? Oh, look at the greatest things ever. And then this one is was made by Misty. And I don't know how, I don't know how they can do like the box and everything. Like it's so professional. It looks that, like someone bought this. Authentic. That's fantastic. Isn't that unreal. And look, look the side and everything. So I mean, the fans are the greatest. They bring me the best presents. They're so go. creative. Everybody so I meet. Creative. Creative. I know. I know. There's a there's one fan that wants to start a website for fan art for the fans to sell some of their art and give a portion of it to various charities. Like pick a different one each month. And I think that's a great idea because wow, is there a lot of talent. You know? Yeah, there definitely is. That no, definitely. I thought it'd be really neat to have an actual art show somewhere, like a physical place. Um, I don't know how that would work. Yeah. Um, wouldn't that be cool? Like maybe at one of the conventions or something. That would be such a good idea. You know, I can tell you slides of what they would like to submit, and then they could just bring it with them to the convention or something. I think it would be really neat to just see the art in person and support artists. There's so many of them out there. 
you know? There are, I mean, in, in Vegas Con, there was a, a woman walking around with this gigantic acrylic painting she had done of Jensen. And she said, well, I brought this, but I don't even know why I brought it because I don't even have an autograph ticket for him. So I don't even know how he's going to see it. I said, well, he may not see it, but here I am, you know, with my friend um, Shannon who runs Chicky and Bean and she and I had booths next to each other. I said, just put it behind our tables and everybody walking past our tables will see it. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, so, you know, she got a lot of publicity and a lot of people just like stopped dead in their tracks to look at her painting. I mean, she was so talented. I'm sure. Um, and I've just, you know, that's been my experience through a lot of these conventions, meeting people coming up and they're just, you know, just having conversations about all of these different great ideas they have and they, they have examples of their work with them. So I, you know what, I can, I have some friends in creation I can talk to to see if, you know, maybe we can have like a, a gallery kind of set up, you know, somewhere at one of the conventions. I think that would be so amazing. And then who knows, maybe they can sell some of it too, you know, I mean... That would be great, you know, especially, you know, for those of, uh, uh, a lot of people have expressed wanting to use their artwork to, you know, help raise funds for charity. whatever charity yeah. and okay. stuff. So, yeah. You know? And so, so I got some homework. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get so cracking. I love your jewelry. Hey, by, by the way, do you have the Mama Tren necklace that you designed nearby? Because I wanted to show it to people. I can't wait to see yeah, it. I do. I have oh one right gosh. here because I can't we're going to get this one a little later. Oh, it's in the mail. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love it so much. Oh, thank I you. I want to tell fans out there, too, that uh, that Jody sent me two of these, one for myself and one for me to have a silent auction at Asylum 14. And that way, you know, whoever wins it will be connected. And I just, I love it so much. And I love the one that you made me of Castiel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm so honored. Yeah, Lauren has Castile's Grace, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must um, be a big seller for you, that one. I'm sorry? Castile's Grace must be a big seller for you, right? That That's my most popular one. I would think. Especially when, especially when his Grace first went missing, I said, I have it. You know, sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. And I got to give it to him in Vegas, which was really uh-oh. Oh, no. Did I lose you, Jody? You froze. Here. Oh, wait, there you are. Okay, wait. You're fr you're freezing here. Mallory, and she's the one that donated to the 5K earlier. Oh, great, great. Yes, she, she was so sweet. I've kind of lost you. Can you see me, Jody? I can see you. Okay, great. Um, I can't see you, but I'll just keep talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> She, this this fan was so awesome because she donated um, to the 5K page for our homeboy run, but she's not going to be at Asylum, so she wanted to gift the entry ticket for the raffle to um, the next person that donated to the page. So hopefully someone will take her up on that generous, sweet offer. Let's say you can only donate $5 if you don't have enough funds. She's going to let you take her ticket, basically, because it's... um. Wait, can I talk about this right now for a yes, sec? Please do, yes. please. So, um, usually I do this this breakfast raffle. I, I know a lot of the fans have, have know about it, but it's um it, it's to benefit Homeboy Industries, and uh, usually Osric does it with me, and it's a tram family you know breakfast, and we take a random winner that we pick the name out of the hat um, to breakfast the next morning, and um, Osric's not going to be at Asylum, so. I asked Elena Huffman if she would come with me, and she said yes. And so it's going to be like a girl power breakfast. So I'm really excited about that. And um, so basically, you just go to the website. Um, I've been tweeting out the page. See? And if you make there. a $20, yeah, $20 donation, gets one entry into the raffle, and then we'll pick it sometime probably. I wonder if they do karaoke at Asylum. I, I've never been there. but um, I hope they do. That would be yeah. fun. Yeah, it would be fun. We'll, we'll just pick a time to announce the winner. And and Valerie, you know, like I said, she can't, she can't come. So she, oh, there you are. Babe. So she, um, anyway, hopefully we'll figure that out. I just love how, you know, the, the fandom has been supporting each other, but buying each other shirts and things. I mean, you know, these campaigns, like, oh, I, I just, I can't get over how sweet people are. And, and the sites are. Yeah. I mean, all you have to do is ask and everybody just is up 
rises to the occasion, you know, everybody's always willing to help. And that's another quality that the fans have that, again, I've never encountered anywhere else. It's very different. It's so true. And I, I'm hoping that, um, you know, I'm putting together a Supernatural, an SPN family team to run in the 5K for Homeboy this October 24th. And I put out, I tweeted out the invitation and I'm just hoping people can use miles and stay with friends, but, you know, come to Los Angeles and run with me. And there's nine people on our team so far. And Elena said she might do it also. I'm, I'm going to ask Osric if he'll do it. So it's a really fun way to just spend a few hours together. There's an art festival, there's food trucks, you know, there's a little yoga class in the beginning before the run, and then um, there's lots of prizes. So if we were to gather the most amount of people for our team, it's not about money, it's about number of people on our team, uh -huh. we would win a party for 50 that would be hosted by Homeboy. And they would, you know, cater it, and they make the most delicious food. And um, it would I've be been following their food truck oh, stuff oh. on Twitter, and it does look really good. It is so yummy because they grow a lot of their vegetables and things right there on the premise, and so everything's really fresh. And um, they make, you know, the best tacos. It's got like a, you know, a Latino feel the food, and it's mm -hmm. so yummy. So anyway, I'm hoping more people will will jump on board and and uh, come out. To LA or maybe if they live near LA that would be so much fun and um, hey, can you can you send me the information because I if I can swing get into LA for that I, I'll do it I would oh, love to do it I would love that more than anything I you know and you know this cause I'm gonna just tell a really quick story this cause is so close to my heart I can't stop fundraising for it because I'm so passionate about it. It is is really transforming lives on a daily basis and it's giving people a second chance because if you've been to jail, you really can't get a job because you've got this record now. So if you believe in giving people second chances, that's what it's all about. They, they have a 70% success rate and only a 30% recidivism rate, which means that only 30% go back to jail. So 70% is huge because the government has the opposite numbers. The government with the prison system, they have a 70% failure rate and the people keep going back to prison. So their model is just brilliant. And I just went to their, their big, huge fundraiser uh, last weekend and every year they honor a homeboy um, they give them an award for, for being particularly courageous or something that they've done. So this homeboy that won, um, he went through the program about a decade ago. It's an 18-month training program, and then you end up with a job at the end of it. And it has, like, rehab services because you have to get off drugs. You have to have your tattoos removed. There's parenting classes. There's anger management. There's all these things that you need to get your life back. So he went through the program, and then he opened his own business. It was a janitorial service called The Mop, which was great, right? And since that time in the 10 years, he has given 28 homeboys a job after they've come out of the program. So it's kind of like Supernatural, where people are helping each other, right? right. So about, I don't know, a few years ago, he was held up at gunpoint by this guy who he recognized as himself all those years ago. Like, you know, he was holding a gun for him, he was completely desperate, he was without any hope, and he said, give me your wallet. And so the guy got his wallet out, he took a $50 bill out and said, well, this is all I've got, I've got $50, so you can either have this bill, or you can go to Homeboy, and here's my card, and when you're out, I will give you a job. So if I were you, I would take the card, and not the $50, because it would go way further. So the guy took the card, he went through it, and he still works there today. <laughs> just got chills. You know, I mean, just just the wherewithal that you would have to have in that moment with a gun to your head to be able to do something like that. That's why he won that mm -hmm. award. But, I mean, this is the kind of transformation that they're making over there at Homeboy on a daily basis where people are kind of, Father Boyle talks about just, he's returning people to themselves. He's not doing anything for them or to them. He's just reconnecting them to who they actually are before they, they went, you know, sideways. And, and that's the whole, you know, thinking is that everyone just wants to belong. So if, if you're going to belong to a gang, at least you belong somewhere. So that's, that's why, you know, he, you just have to attach yourself to the right group <laughs> and so that you can put on the right path. So anyway, that's what made me think of, of Supernatural too, because again, it's, 
it's a big community where people can feel very quickly like they belong somewhere and they're not they're not a freak you know they can just let their freak fly and people exactly. really support them and, and everything so it's just it's just been a wonderful community to be a part of thanks for letting me blather on about that <laughs> oh no 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 I, I was actually I you know one of the things I wanted to ask you about because I had not heard of homeboy industries before speaking with you and after you know speaking with you about it in Seattle I did a lot of reading up on it and it just completely blew my mind because um, you know like you and I've spoken before about how you know the the population that I teach um, in Nashville here in Tennessee they're in danger, in such danger of going down that path. These are um, kids that are severely economically disadvantaged. Their parents, a lot of their parents are incarcerated or they have siblings that are incarcerated. There's, you know, a lot of drug abuse going on. And I, I remember telling you, if only I could take Homeboy Industries and just bring it down south here, you know, um, well, it would just so much good, but I intend on sharing homeboy, homeboyindustries.org with the administration in the school so that at least that could hopefully plant a few seeds where they can reach out and either develop their own programs here Absolutely. or at least do some kind of community outreach. And also Homeboy will send a consultant over there to help. They, they're not in the business of trying to duplicate themselves all over the country. They just can't because they've got too much work to do here. But right. they're more than willing to help people in various states set up their own. So pretty cool. It, so I wanted to thank you for opening my eyes to that because that's something I didn't even know existed. I mean, the services they offer are incredible. 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 I mean, and it costs $13 million a year for them to run Homeboy because – they're actually paying people a salary because he feels like it's really important that it's a way to get your self-esteem back to have a job. And so, right. yeah, and so that's why it costs so much money to run and that's why I'm always fundraising and people are going to be so sick of me. But this is, no, 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 that, that will never happen, trust me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Raven wanted to show oh, this. Raven. Really quickly. Um, oh, wait, you can do the right way, I think. If it, it, are you holding it the right way? Yeah, she's holding it the right way this time. So you get, she's holding it backwards so that it's showing forwards. But you know what? It's, it's For me, it's showing backwards right now. But that's okay. Yeah, I know the message. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's try it this way. Yeah, that looks correct now. Oh, my God. That's correct. So <laughs> it's Thank showing you. backwards Thank for me. Okay. You're so All right, now I've got to finish talking with Lauren, okay, baby? All right, good girl. Um, Thank you for letting her. Don't worry. She's so sweet. <laughs> um, we have some comments in the chat room. Someone's asking, um, she's saying that I love that you play such a dedicated mom on Supernatural and I know that you are in real life. Do you think about your sons and, and kind of channel your real motherly instincts to play Mrs. Tran? Oh, absolutely. I, um, I, I would categorize myself though as more of a, a tiger mom wannabe than actually being able to carry it through in real life because, you know, Mrs. Tran is a badass. I mean, oops, sorry, Raven. Um, oh, but no, she left. You're, you're okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> me, so. Yeah, I mean, I have some friends that are that are real Tiger moms. I just don't think I can do it because I, I just, it was sort of done to me with from my mom and, and my grandmother as well. And there's, you know, a point to, you know, you want to instill in your kids that they should strive for excellence. But not to the point of, you know, taking up subjects that they really have no interest in. You, you know, I mean, you got to support who, who you actually have. So I'm much more in that vein. And I'm just waiting, actually, for my kids. My little one, he, he wants to be a hockey goalie. So we're, you know, taking them to all that uh, on travel team and everything. So I just want them to pick something they love so I can get behind it and push. And, and I'm hoping that they'll turn out half as nice as Osric because then... <laughs> There, I'm going to be in good shape because honestly, he is he is just a gem, and you know everyone knows that. But for real, he he really is the real deal. And um, so I asked him. I said, "Did you have a tiger mom?" And he said, "Not really. I mean, it was expected that I achieved something, but it wasn't like set in stone what I'm supposed to do." And he goes, "I'm still figuring it out. I can't believe how many hours he plays games. He must be so good at those games." Is it, is he a gamer? Gamer, yeah. And then the oh. cosplaying, you know. 
But, um, but you know, he's such a great actor, so I mean, he's already got that. But I could see him being a producer and a director and just, you know, really expanding out into the industry even more, you know. But, yeah, I definitely channel my own. It, it, it helps that I'm a mom, for sure. I mean, that scene that I had to do when I find out that Kevin dies was just, like, unbearable to do that scene. I do. It's a hard scene for anybody to watch, especially if you're a parent. That's very hard. Oh, I, I can't. You know, I mean, you can't imagine anything worse, right? And it, no. I didn't even want to let my imagination go there. You know, um, but but Jared was really really supportive during it because he could tell. I was like, I was putting on the brakes, you know. <laughs> but he was very very present with me, and so he was just he was just great because um, it's not easy. It wasn't easy for him either, probably. <laughs> No, no, I'm so, sure. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, it's, I'd say I definitely use you know some of my experience to play that character for sure. And then also, I got to I used to be a dancer because you know Chorus Line was a dance show, mm -hmm. so I, I got to use almost pretty much everything I've ever done in my career. I feel like I've used a little bit of my experience in Supernatural because there's humor in it. So I used my sitcom experience, right? And then there's there's a lot of drama in it and I used all of that classical training and stuff and then there's real physicality because I, I got to do all of my own stunts and the punching and the running and the heels and the you know so I felt like I, I used my physicality and then also just the fact that it's so out there I mean it's bizarre right a lot lots of it and and I did so much avant-garde theater that nothing really threw me it's like Ryan Curtis like okay so now there's going to be red smoke coming out of your mouth so just kind of Lean back and open up, ah, and just let it keep coming out. And they were like, well, I was so into it that the, look, that the director was like, okay, Laura, you can cut, you can cut, cut, you can cut now. Because I just kept going and going, and I was so excited to see the red smoke. <laughs> so it was the first time they ever had red, too, because I guess it had been black up till then. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. You introduced the red. That's right. That's right. You broke the mold. I broke them all. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, you know, being an Asian American, my, my, my husband's an Asian American. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Yeah, his family's from the Philippines, and he always, watching TV with him, or anything with him really, he, he's very often pointing out to me, you know, Asians are always portrayed very, uh, very stereotypically, or, you know, and they're underrepresented to begin with, and when they are represented, it's not authentic it's very you know you you know you know so I wanted to know do you find this to be true um, from an actor's perspective does, does he find does he feel that way across the board like everything he's ever seen with an Asian person he feels a stereotype wow that's a really strong statement it, it, yeah that that's my husband yeah he's he's got strong opinions <laughs> well I think that you know it's been bad I have to give them that, you know, and I think every generation we get a little bit closer to having um, Asian Americans represented it just just being American because I grew up in a in an all Jewish white community. There wasn't one okay. other Asian family in my town when I was growing up. And so my experience as an Asian person, I actually had to learn it. I had to study my grandma because I was surrounded by all like a, a real Caucasian upbringing. And so I, I understand his point, and it's it's imbalanced with the number of stereotypical roles that you see out there, mm -hmm. and people like James Shigeta and the, the Asian actors from a couple generations ago had it the worst, where they had to do you know the false teeth, the buck teeth, and the glasses, and the real thick accent and all that. But then each generation, I feel like those people were actually pioneers because they were paving the way for the next generation. Um, so that it, it's a little bit better. So by the time we got to Joy Luck Club, I felt like, you know, there were a couple uh, characters that spoke with accents in there because they were from China. and But most of the people in there, the stories were Asian American. So that was the first movie. I, I'd be interested to hear what he thought about that movie because... Um, I, know, I don't think he's seen it, actually. Yeah, ask him to see it because it was written by an Asian American woman. And, and the stories in there are Asian American stories. That's why it was so so different. And um, so I feel like in that way, I was paving the way for the generation that's come after me. So now that we have, you know, like my friend Ming-Na is on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like there's, 
there's lots of examples now where um, someone's just playing, um, you know, an American person who happens to be Asian. Well, they even did that with Friends, really. They, they didn't really, maybe except for the, the very first episode when I came, and, and I actually pitched that joke about, you know, hello, welcome to our country. And I said, can I say thank you? I'm from New York. That was <laughs> actually my pitch because I was living in New York, and that would happen to me all the time. People would speak louder to me. As if I were deaf and dumb or something like that. And, and it's such a misperception yeah. that happens to no matter what your ethnicity, if they think that you're not, if you don't speak English, that you have to speak louder for right, something. Right, right, exactly, exactly. But I do, you know, to your husband's point, I do think, I understand what he's saying, but I do think that it continues to get better. And then, you know, the, the smaller kids now that are will be actors in like 10 years from now, they're, I just think it'll be, you know, continue to uh, keep going that way. And they'll always have, look, I've played a lot of characters with that have accents, and I've never really looked down on it because I felt like if I can just work with the writers and say, you know what, that's not really cool for me to say that. That's how you educate people. And plus the fact that there are so many millions of people on this planet that have an accent. <laughs> so, so for me to not, to, to say, you know, I will not play that. It just cuts out, you know, a lot of roles, and it's hard enough as it is to get work as, you know, coming from an ethnic, you know, pool. There's just less to audition for, and then you couple that with being a woman, and then you couple that with being five feet tall, and then you couple that with being over 40, and it's like, I shouldn't be working at all. <laughs> so I'm always really grateful to have the work, because I feel like, as I said, I, I'm just hopeful. That it, that it gets better and I try to bring as much truth to the roles that I do as I can but I, I do know that there have been people out there in the community that are like how can you do that like shame on you for doing a character with a, an accent and that's that's legitimate I just don't feel that way and to me at the end of the day you know they can they get to feel that way and I get to feel how I feel and they can just turn the channel <laughs> if it depends on that much <laughs> that's what it comes down to yeah, right. but like my one person show when I when I wrote it about my grandmother, it was mm -hmm. about her journey from China to the United States. I basically transcribed her talking. So I just I just tape recorded her and then transcribed it and that made up a bulk of what my monologues were in that in that play. And she had an accent, you know? And it was her story. And I have to say that the Asian people that came to see that play really connected to it because it was so truthful. So I think it's it's the writing that's everything. You have to start with good writing, and then you know how you execute it is the next step. So people will come up to me afterwards and say, "Oh my God, that was my grandmother." I mean, you were playing my grandmother up there, so that you know, so that was great. So, anyway. And that, that that's awesome because then you're creating all of these connections and you're relating to people. And and like you said, it's all rooted in the writing. If it's not rooted in good writing, then yeah, I mean, I've had to say really offensive lines before, and I've said, you know, I just can't say that. You have to change it, you know? I mean, like people eating dogs and things like that. You know, it's just, they don't, oh, really? mean, to be, they don't mean to be really racist and things. They just don't, they just don't know any better. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. But when you do bring to their attention, okay, well, let's talk about this for a second. Do you genu generally yeah. get a good reception from yes, it? Because they don't want to be a jerk. They really don't. That's, 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 they're just that's trying to be, yeah, they're trying to be funny. And, you know, they're, they're trying to make it work. And, you know, Richard Pryor used to tell, like, say all kinds of things, in, you know, in the black community. And to me, I think the bottom line is, is you know, if the community, he thinks it's funny. You can get away with it, right? But if it bombs, you really got a problem then, so it better be really funny. That's true. That's yeah. true. But, but it's been a topic that I've had to talk about like throughout my whole career because, like I said, there, are, there have been actors I've known that, that just refuse to do that. But I feel like I wouldn't have grown as much as an actor if I ever refused any job with an accent. It, just, mm -hmm. just my, it was just my choice at the time. And I, but I do prefer I do prefer doing you know just American characters, I have to say. but if it's the right project, it's okay. Yeah, like Supernatural. Like Supernatural. Well, I don't know. I wonder if people think. I guess it's a little stereotypical in the sense that she's so harsh. Like, 
But, you know, Mrs. Tran doesn't have an accent or anything like that, and I'm not bowing all over the place. It's not, she's just tough. <laughs> Aren't there other tough women in Supernatural? There are, right? <laughs> yeah, all of the women have been complete and total badasses. Sorry, Raven. Um, on the show, I think initially with Kevin, they started to be a little stereotypical because, you know, I'm in advanced placement and I have to go to, you know, like, I have to be this complete overachiever, you know, that kind of thing. But they kind of just, they they fleshed out his character beautifully. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And they made her strong, him stronger as he went on. But yeah. But we're getting a tattoo and he's like wincing like a baby. <laughs> and I'm just like, do, 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 do. <laughs> that was my trivia question. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Did I just ruin it? No, because you didn't say what I'm going to ask them. Okay, good, good, good. So. We're, we're still cool. No one better Google it yet. Yeah, don't Google anything. Don't cheat. Don't be like my fifth graders. Okay. So, um, oh, someone is asking, um, what was your favorite thing about being on Supernatural? What was my favorite? Besides thing? punching Mark Shepard. Besides punching, okay. So I lo also love the moment when Jer uh, Jensen had me pinned up against the post. That could have taken another 20 minutes to shoot. <laughs> completely happy <laughs> because he had his arm up like this and I was like this just looking at him and he was trying to slit my throat but it looked like he could kiss me too could go either way and I was like whatever you know like oh my god this is crazy and I, I can show Lauren Tom's a Dean girl <laughs> I knew, it, I knew she had an other another cool factor going on oh, there cute. okay well I guess I but, you know, people have tweeted that to me, and I'm like, I can't choose between my kids. That's like saying, which one do you like better, Raven or your son? You know, you can't do that. But, Dean, I have to say, I kept finding myself staring at him. And then I'd catch myself. I'd be like, oh, my God. Okay, I'm, so, I'm just staring at him. And then my face would just naturally just land there again. And I'd be like, oh, my God, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And I like I have a really cute husband. Wait, do I have a photo somewhere? He's Where is he? so cute. He's six five, my husband, just like uh, Jared. So I got a cutie myself. Wow. So I shouldn't be looking, but it's just because you're married doesn't mean you're dead, right? That's so true. my favorite my favorite part about Supernatural, I guess, is this just that they gave me kind of a juicy part to play. And and that's always the most fun to have something to really dig into. And, and not, you know, just phone it in or give, give just a real surface thing, you, you know, because you can, because that's what the material is. They, it's, it's just been so much fun to be a part of that experience and the cast. And I guess I could say one of my favorite things, too, is just being a part of this fandom. Nothing like I've ever experienced. And, and I'll say that there's, you know, the fans have been really respectful, too. Because I keep running into this problem at airports lately with, um, I, you know, I love Futurama. The Futurama fans are really amazing, but I think something's happening where these stores or something are hiring kids or people to um, come up to us as cast members with a stack of things to sign, like 20, 30 photos. Um, and then they find out like what flight we're on. I was like chased through Seattle in, in, in a car and it was just like really scary. And you know, here I am, like most people don't, like I can go through my life and not get harassed at all. And then when people stop me, it's usually always really loving and sweet if they recognize me from a show. But this is something else. It's like, it's crazy it's to think. It's stalking and I was just in Chicago and I asked these two guys, I said, how did you know what flight I was on? And they said, oh, we have a friend that works for the airline. And I'm like, I don't think that's true. I think that someone's paying the airlines to give that information out. Um, I just wish there was something I could do to stop that. Because if, if I'm experiencing that, can you, I can only imagine what Jared and Jensen and Misha have to go through. I mean... At, you well, know. there are always these pictures popping up on Twitter or wherever, Tumblr, of the guys in the airport. And I don't think, oh, what a cool picture. I think, what an invasion of their privacy. They are traveling. They're not 
on set. They're not at an event. This is their time. Not, you know, I just think it's so invasive and disrespectful. Well, it's a little scary too. Like mm -hmm. when I, you know, just being a woman, uh, when I was traveling by myself, you know, because it was a little, a little hostile. Because these people were like, you, you made us work so hard. You made us chase you all over the city for this. You, you know, you have to sign these. And I was just like, you don't owe anybody anything. Yeah, I kind of felt like that. But then I just didn't know. I didn't want to be super rude. And then the, finally, the airport security came over and helped me. Good. And I normally don't have to deal with that problem. I don't. I don't want to make it seem like I. Yeah. You know, like, but it's just once in a while. But I have to say, the Supernatural fans are just a different breed. It, it's like it's just they're just giving you can tell that they're actual fans too, you know, yeah. and they're just trying to connect. But and when it becomes like a business like that, it just feels really creepy. Yeah, that that's just I can't even articulate what that makes me feel like that. That kind of made me feel sick, honestly, to hear uh -huh. that. That that's yeah. very disturbing. Kind of shaking after that one in Seattle, I have to say. I can imagine, you know, you, you feel violated. That was a violation, really. Yeah, and I've learned something from my friends, too, who are also in a similar boat. If you sign something with a black Sharpie, they can't lift it off. So if I said, what's your name, I'll write it to you. Because if they're an actual fan, I certainly don't want to offend them. So I'll write it to you. But if, if you use the pen they give you to use, which is usually blue, they can professionally lift that off. Oh, That's of course, because like the wing. Yeah. Yes, I didn't even know that. I that out really easily. Right. Exactly. Well, anyway, I don't know how we got on that subject, but no, that was that was interesting, and that that that's something that I'm sure many of us weren't aware of. So wow, and like I hope that everyone that's watching anything. this just yeah. has more sensitivity towards. You know, because I, I, you do hear about some fans saying, you know, you know, I want to find out what hotel the boys are staying at, and you know, it's not. Yeah, you just want to be a little respectful, but you know, I think most people are in this fandom. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um. Before, oh, oh wow! That Are you like too, Jody? That went fast. That went way too fast. So what I'm gonna do? is I'm just going to put the trivia out there okay. and then we'll continue to talk while people um, yes. hopefully write in the right answer. Okay. <laughs> what are they okay. going to win a necklace? They are going to win this necklace. Oh my gosh. They are going to win the love of Mrs. Tran, which is um, one of, two of them are on their way to Lauren as I Yay! They were sent in the mail over the weekend, and one is going to um, benefit Homeboy Industries, and the other is going to benefit Lauren's neckline. Yes, and I'm going to wear it the whole time, just Yay. to show it off, model it. Um, so the question is, let me, I have to cheat because I, I am so bad. My memory is just shod. So I'm going to go to, here we go. Okay, so in the episode, What's Up, Tiger Mommy, um, Dean is explaining to Mrs. Tran that she needs to get a tattoo. And she says, fine. And Dean says, really? And what does Mrs. Tran say right after that? You need to tell me exactly what she says, spelled correctly, um, if there are any typos, off limits because I'm a teacher and it makes me crazy. So <laughs> you have to type exactly what Mrs. Tran responded to Dean after he said, really? About her getting a tattoo. Um, and while I'm waiting for you guys to respond to that, I have, let me see. Um, oh, um, Eileen, someone named Eileen Prince is suggesting to you um, that she has a friend who's a VP at United Airlines, and if you're being followed, call the airline and report it, and they have a policy to fire anyone who gives that information or harasses people. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Thank that, you. That is good to know. Thank you, Eileen. Appreciate you, Eileen. that. <laughs> um, and I have... Let me see. I have a question. Um, it, okay, and this is a, a, a dumb, shallow question I ask every guest I have. No. If, you were, 
if you're stuck on a desert des desert island, it, it doesn't have to be a desert island. It could be a tropical island, but you are deserted on this island, and you could only have one supernatural character with you. Who would it be, and why? Oh, it'd have to be Osric. You know, there's no love that's stronger than a mother or son. That's, I agree. Right? I mean, so I wouldn't have sex for the rest of my life. <laughs> Those <laughs> things. I'd rather have my son with me. That I couldn't bear being without. That's my Oh, this is sweet. <laughs> I like that answer. I'm sure he wouldn't say me because no one wants their mom around. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling he would say you. I don't would say you. He's a family. He seems like a family guy, Aww. you know? One day he'd um, make a great dad. He, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't he? It was so funny. He um he had met my son Jaden, the one that you briefly met earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, in DC last year, and you know Jaden, um, he used to have longer hair the way Osric did. Okay. And Osric took a look at him and said, "Oh my God, you look like a young me." <laughs> and it so made Jaden's year. He still talks about that. Aww. It was like, so good with kids. Osric is so like with everybody. He knows what to say to make everybody. Oh, here, here comes Osric Jr. right now. Um, okay, so here, here. All right, imagine Osric with shorter hair. Here he is. Oh God. God, you are so right. Wow, <laughs> handsome boy. Sorry, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you're handsome, dude. Sorry. You're going to have to live with it. <laughs> He's, yeah. This is a carbon copy of my husband, by the way. How, how old is he? He's 12. Okay. He's 12. It's so funny. People ask me if he's adopted because he's just like my so Asian. Just oh, my an, gosh. Yeah, I was the incubator. That was it. Uh, I guess so. It's funny because my, like, older, yeah, my older boy looks more Asian than my younger one. Just, oh, okay. That's how it turns out. My middle, my middle son is like... Her is like Raven's face. I don't think Raven looks all that Asian. She does. She's like, oh, not really, actually. Maybe I don't know. Hair too is throwing me. No, you are half Asian, but but you don't look like the Asian doesn't come out as much as it does in Jaden. Right, right, right. right. But oh, we have a winner. Really? Yeah, it looks like Valerie. Valerie wrote, doesn't she say what? Like, it's my first tattoo. Ding, 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 oh, ding, Valerie. Is that Valerie that donated the, the $20 to the next person? Is that, are you the same Valerie that, that donated to the 5K? Please let us know. Um, Lauren's asking, there's like a few um, seconds delay between okay, okay. our conversation oh, and the oh, chat. Congratulations. So. Uh, yeah, but the love of Mrs. Tran is going to awesome. Valerie. Yay. This <laughs> very, very, very exciting. I'm glad it's going to go to a good home. Yay! Yay. Oh, and we still have two minutes, so I'm going to ask you one more quickie question. Stop. Okay. That was Jade, and give me. Oh, no, okay. Um, finish this sentence. Okay. All you need is. Oh my gosh. How many people have said love? Those are all the Beatles fans. Well, Ruth Connell started out with love. She goes, oh, but that's the song. I can't say that. So. <laughs> well, that's the first thing you think of, right? But I think that every, every word that pops into my head has the same sentiment in a way. Because I think it was the Dalai Lama once that said, the answer to any question is compassion. So compassion to others and compassion to yourself. I think that's all you need. <laughs> that sounds great to me. Yep. That's great to me, and that sounds very consistent with who you are. Yeah, and you know the whole message with Homeboy too. I mean, it, right. that's exactly what I was thinking. That's what made me. It's so enjoy. easy to demonize people who who have made mistakes, you know, and and it's our nature, human nature, to just want to glob on and go kill that person for doing that, you know. And it takes a much stronger... We're very good at crucifying, but we're not very good at giving second or third chances, you right, know? Right, right, right. But anyway, wow, that went fast, Jody. You made it so easy and fun. Oh, thank you. I mean, this was a fantastic conversation. I am so... Wow. 
I'm overwhelmed and I'm so sad that it's over. Me too. Well, I, get, I hope I get to see you soon. So maybe yeah. they'll have me back at one of these things. Or I would, I'll see you in LA in October. How about that? I oh, Yeah, gosh. please send me the information because not only will I try my best to be there, but I'd also like to share that. I'll, I'll tweet it and, and put it on Facebook and everything too so that hopefully we can oh. get as many people on board as possible. That would be great. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you, Lauren. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so okay. much. <laughs> See you later. Okay, okay, take care. Have a good night. You too. I just clicked it. Okay, well, I want to thank all of you for hanging in there and watching our fantastic conversation with Lauren. Tom, thank you for sending in your questions and your comments. And I apologize if I didn't get to everybody's. There was just so much great stuff to talk about. Um, and again, congratulations to Valerie for winning the love of Mrs. Tran. Please email me. I'm going to put my email address in the chat window so that you can send me an email with um, your information so that I can mail this to you. Um, there we go. So my address, my email address is now in the chat window. Please email me and put in the subject line, Mrs. Tran interview so that I know exactly what prize you're getting. And, um, thank you again for watching and I will see you next week. And thank you. Good night. Hey mom, look.